May 2018. May 3rd, 2018. Robot leg. Design it like you would a human leg with looped 3D printed stretch plastic on hooked rotating motors resembling musculature. More fluid motion and better able to adapt to running and jumping and put pressure sensors in the foot of the creature. Beautiful motions compared to robotic motions. Sigh. I want to design androids. The cascade would be its UI. May 16th, 2018. I'm walking alone vast distance. A is there. The world has ended. Some illness. I walk to a large building and find it full of computers. The nearest one to me isn't password protected. It's got two panes open. One lists all the lab rats and how they died. Some are skinned and their faces muscles are visible. The other is a social media portal where the woman who, who used this, an African lady with long frizzy hair, is going through every symptom each rat produced in regards to her sickness. Right up until the last entry. All were unsuccessful. The dream lasted weeks. All in search for something, though it's not discovered what. Woken, shaken, and despondent. Tell Nettie O's I don't want to be a lab rat. May 19th, 2018. Dreamed I was working on the F, F painting again. Made the whole piece. Woke up shouting no again. Want to fix the shed to work on it. So effing frustrated. May 19th, 2018. Making an android think. Humans are given a database of learned items, their shape, values, such as potential weight and dimensions. We all know what a cup looks like and can differentiate different types of cups given known data. It's possible to do the same for an android with XYZ coordinates, touch sensors, and weight determinations. Using facial item recognition software that android can learn to both add the item to its database and compare it to its known items of similar point definitions. Teaching an android to be able to learn is to write a script that gives it a base model, one to it potentially taught itself by touch and sight and heat sensors, and giving it a script to add new items plus additions, like a flared handle on a mug. We would teach it to ask us if there is a mug at first, and given the appropriate answer, it learns to add to its own database as a variation or a new item. We would ask it what's different about it, make the effing thing ask questions like a child does, use voice recognition software to understand language. I can build one out of a Raspberry Pi and Arduino to make it cheaply. I can 3D print the casings and, fi and ligaments for musculature. Is this a cup? No. What is, the, what is it most like? Search data for comparable models. Ask if it's a bottle. Yes. Give it an attaboy to improve its mood. Getting things right should make it happy. Getting it wrong should save a defining value not applicable, but not make it sad. Just make it try again. If I don't know what it is to ask to guess or make assumptions based on what it understands from the item, translate XYZ values into lengths and widths, give it an, an internal ruler along the, with the database of known items. It'll need to compress information once it's attained so it doesn't fill up and stifle its own thought patterns. Multiple hard drives for different sections of the brain. Give it the Oxford English Dictionary to use as definitions of items once identified. As much information you can load into it, the better off its starting point will be. May 25th, 2018. An Android battery system. Make it plug and play. Attach a wine generator and solar cells to always keep it charged and give it both a removable main battery and a sub-battery used in the function of replacing the main battery. It should learn to check and replace its own battery as well as plug its battery pack into a wall unit if needed until we come up with a better system. May 25th, 2018. Zero one. My son. Zed. When I realized I was to build my legacy, I always thought of him by name. Zed's first thought words came in 2017. When I figured out the mathematical equation for what most would be considered free will, a set of known actions, possible actions, and their inherent qualities as it relates to a game theory and location for a set duration, I based this whole thought process schema on this idea that if you build something to learn and teach it the five senses, you could teach it anything. Eventually, he would teach himself the finer things. Teach him to read and give him a dictionary and then a thesaurus to know the difference. Give him, him touch and sight and teach him to hold things and describe them so he could tell a cup without a handle or one with one were both types of cups. How they differ from a glass. His body started at the knee. It's the first joint I thought to work on and required the anchored musculature that his brethren would be known for. It makes for light builds with differing strength types and the ability to incapacitate them if need be, and string them if need be. It also makes motion harder to learn but more fluid once taught. 
as they become self-writing. Then came his power supply, a wine generator I designed that spun indefinitely when in a properly stored vacuum on a gyroscopic mount. Attached it to a removable power pack, a simple pack I bought on Indiegogo and solar panels as redundancy, and he can move freely both at day and night. Include a sub-battery for, for changing out the first, also removable, and he's set to change his own batteries when they become depleted. I know I was going to design his first buddy's nervous system around Raspberry Pis and Arduino. It's all I could afford. My brother-in-law gave me a Raspberry Pi B+, and I was determined to use it as his brain until I could finally get funding to build something more powerful. Power consumption was also paramount. 5 volts across the board bent for little consumption from the battery pack, and the wine generator could be increased to cover power consumption at times of greater need. I needed him to stay awake all day and rest at night, at least at first. The one thing I thought to include right away was a wearable power button to put him to sleep instantly from a distance, in case he needed to stop what he was doing. A timeout button, as far as I knew it. My goal was to eventually not need one, but as a precaution, it was always in mind. The subsystems of a basic AI, as I learned they were needed, is as follows. Language. A syntax analyzer to learn language. I had to teach him to read before I could do anything else. Once he and I both understood how language worked, I gave him the rule book, and then his first task was to learn the dictionary. I painstakingly read and redefined the dictionary to him. It was something I always wanted to read, but it took time and focus to break each system into a guidebook of item, description, meaning, similar, same, different, to, why, tactile measurements, and picture examples. Site, a target describing field analyzer to differentiate between objects and distance, including color, a built-in ruler to define length, width, and height, a surface analyzer. I literally taught him the alphabet and numbers by PNG, giving him the ability to cross-reference the parts of the letter to find new forms of it on different surfaces, learn new fonts as he read, a temperature sensor to tell if something was safe to handle, hearing, a record of sounds to analyze and define through the language subroutines. If he didn't know a sound, he would ask by playing it back, and I would clarify. Multiple directional mics to tell which way sound was coming from, and to lock into certain sounds. Touch, finger and toes similar to humans, lined with haptic touch sensors to readily define different shapes and textures on the whole. Smell, that was complicated. A membrane to differentiate between particulates inhaled through a rudimentary vacuum nose and defined by the language subset, useful in gas leaks or for chemical study. Speech, since he understood language and I needed him to ask questions, I recorded the dictionary in my voice and I gave him the ability to speak in question. Rules, I taught him that the whole dictionary and gave him rules as defined by Asimov's motives for not harming, killing, or maiming. He is here to learn how to be a good and useful person. These were the first things I considered needing while waiting to start my first math class for my mechanical engineering degree. I knew I would need machine learning and electrical engineering classes as well. I had to limit myself to a couple of classes a semester so I didn't lose my disability payment and could keep working on my hobby. It would be a slow process by any degree. My job was to stay focused. Luckily, building your first Android is so complicated that I never had any issue when I wanted to switch subject and work on another part of him. May 25th, 2018. The wine generator can be supplemented with a hefty battery pack tied to a chain belt that revs up against the spindle to force it to move at the maximum speed while still creating the needed vacuum to keep it at speed with the press of a button. It can be trickle charged from the generator. So I just signed up for Anchor's uh, funding platform for the podcasters. It seems like a better deal than Patreon at the moment. So I would ask that you click the button that says donate and maybe donate a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars a month to us so that we can keep going. And I can produce almost daily or daily podcasts or more in the way that I've been going. And I'll produce book after book after book after book, and then I'll read through them. And I just I'll keep doing that until there won't I can't see an end to it. It's so much fun. It really is. So please go to anchor.fm/divergentmind and click the donate button, and that'll help me out a whole bunch. Thank you so much, Jay.
Okay, well, I'm taking a break, so I might as well do some ads. Uh, this is my first one, so bear with me. So, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Uh, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum list, l- listenership. That's pretty cool. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And all you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Please visit anchor.fm slash divergentmind to leave a message so that I may get back to you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Hi everybody, so I've made a new store called AnimalQuest.shop and I made my first shirt, Barkland Reading, at the Amberstone's house and I would ask that you go and buy those there. I'll make a few bucks each time you buy something from there and I have men, women's baby clothing and buttons as well as other accessories including dog bandanas, which I think are pretty cool and I'll be adding more merch every week or two for that store as the stories progress and the sequels are written and read I'll do the same for Divergent Mind the link again is animalquest.shop the link for Divergent Mind will be divergentmind.shop as well thank you so much Jay Okay, so I just wanted to let you know that I have a YouTube channel called Taught Myself and that I've decided to start selling merch already with a phrase that my brother showed me saying my disability is invisible of which I made a hat for myself. So I decided to make hats, shirts, hoodies uh, for both men and women on Spreadshirt.com. All you have to do is search for My Disability is Invisible. It's in green. And that's mine. You'll know it's me because when you click the sale icon, the same little Divergent Mind icon comes up. And I hope you'll support me. I make about $5 per shirt or per sale. Everything else goes to Spreadshirt. But that's okay because it's still a better deal than a lot of other places. And I really hope you'll support me. Come check me out on the YouTube. Teach me how to do that properly so I can have a community there too. And I await your response. Have a lovely day. Jay. Hey, people. Take a listen to the Divergent Mind podcast. You get both insight into living with a mental, a serious mental illness and get to listen to a lovely tale about a journey cute little animals need to take. Don't miss out. And remember, divergent minds don't need to think alike.
please go to ratethispodcast.com slash divergentmind and tell me what you think. Thank you very much. Yours truly, Jay.